Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to yet another special program right here on KBN TV, the finest television. And we're talking about Labor Matters, a show which comes to your screen every Sunday from 14 to 15 hours as we get to talk about issues to do with employers and employees. I am your host, as usual, Patricia Shilamkwa, and I'm excited today because we're looking at an interesting week, and I just hope you will get to, I mean, comment on our talk of discussion for today. Let's give us feedback. We want to know what you think about our topic of discussion for today. So today we're looking at HR audits, a step-by-step -step guide. That is what we are looking at today. So if you have any questions, comments, or contributions about a topic of discussion, please use the number which is right on your TV screen or better go on our Facebook page which is KBN TV and get to drop us those comments. In the studio, I am not alone as usual. You know, every Sunday I am with Mr. Owen Katongo Kabanda who is a management and a leadership advisor. I mean, he's also an employment expert. So if you have any questions uh, regarding the employment issues and whatnot, he is a right person to channel those uh, questions too. He has also 15 years of HR consulting and management experience in various companies in Zambia. Mr. Commander, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Patricia. How are you doing? I'm good, good. How are you? Me, yeah, I'm very good. I'm happy to be here. I know, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's been a while. Yeah, and the year is starting and it's moving very fast. <laughs> so. No, it's good to have you. Glad to be here. Amazing. And Mr. Kavanda, today is joined by Ms. Pinga Kaluba, who is a talent agent administration manager for Zambia and Malawi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Patricia. How, How are you doing? Good, good. How are you? It's good to have you back on Labor Matters. Thank you. It's great to be back. <laughs> I believe our viewers missed and they've been wondering, where is she? And it's good to have you. I'm back and today we're dealing with an, an exciting topic, mm -hmm. so can't wait to dive in. Amazing. Ms. Lakanda, coming to you, uh, in the last episode we did talk about uh, setting up a company and uh, the HR things that a company must pay attention to. Yeah. And uh, we did indicate that in this episode we'll look at setting up the HR department in a company. But however, due to demand from the HR practitioners, we thought of just focusing uh, today on HR audits, uh, which can also help uh, someone set up the HR department. But just to start the conversation, you having been undertaking the HR audits for over 15 years, Mr. Kalanda, what are they and why are they so important? Yeah, so HR audits in very, very simple terms, it's really um, a systematic process that you follow mm -hmm. uh, to look at the, the company's HR policies, procedures, structures, as well as the, the practices mm -hmm. in that company. Um, in a very simple uh, the kind of definition, that's what we can call it. And uh, so in, in terms of the importance of uh, these HR audits, really they help the company to ensure that it understands the level at which it is in terms of compliance to the prevailing labor laws. As you know, uh, every country passes different laws to, to kind of manage the employment relationship between employers and employees. So when you carry out these HR audits, basically you, you try and see to what extent is this company complying with those uh, labor laws as well as the regulations. Uh, the HR audits also bring out the practices uh, of, of that company terms of how is management actually treating the employees, how is management, um, you know, making sure that the employees are working in line with the contracts that they, they signed. Mm -hmm. uh, so the HR audits will also bring out if there are any discrepancies in terms of what you promised employees versus what you're giving them. If you promise them a salary of this much, mm -hmm. but when the audits are done, you actually found that you're paying less or what you promised, mm -hmm. or some employees, they would have done overtime work, but you're also not paying it when in the contracts it was stipulated as, as such. So uh, the audits will also help to really show the differences in terms of what is actually happening in terms of the contracts, uh, or terms and conditions of service, and what is actually on the ground. These audits are also important to, to see um, how the company is also um, treating employees in terms of the policies that they put in place. Mm -hmm. uh, so the audit will help to, to determine if you actually have policies in place, which are in line with the law, or there are actually no policies. Because we've seen, we've been into different companies, and you find that uh, when you carry out the audit, there's actually nothing. You find somebody, you're asking for a, a policy document, 
which will be signed by the board. Uh, you find somebody is giving you a small document coming from their computer. <laughs> Clearly, that's not the, the policy. It's a, it's a, it's a half-a-page uh, document now. So these HR policies really help to um, demonstrate or to establish to what extent the company is actually having the necessary policies in place, which then help in terms of how in that company. Well explained. Now coming to you, Ms. Kalba, who does the HR audits? I know he's explained what uh, HR audits is all about. Now someone might be wondering, who does the audits? Okay, so these audits are done by, you know, various people. It could be um, <coughs> internal or external auditors. Mm -hmm. So sometimes a company can, you know, procure uh, audit services and then those can be done. It could be done by legal practitioners, those who are well-versed in employment law. Mm -hmm. They will be able to um, ascertain if you are compliant or not. They can be done by internal HR practitioners or even HR consultants, mm -hmm. those who are knowledgeable, because that's the most important thing. If yeah. you're getting a consultant, <laughs> you really need to make sure that they are knowledgeable, mm -hmm. even yeah. your internal HR practitioner. As an employer, that needs to be, you know, you, you need to be on top of that and ensure that they are well versed in uh, knowledge and they know what is needed. Like Mr. Kawanda has, has spoken about policies, mm -hmm. there are some that, you know, they would come in and conduct a, um, an audit and they don't know that policies are supposed to be in place, yeah. you know, according to the law. So these are some of the people that can. Um, do these um, audits and also you can have compliance officers from the Ministry of Labor. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these are mandated to come into organizations to be able to check that an employer is um, doing what is needed and is compliant with the law. Mm -hmm. So they'll be able to check out and this is where as HRs <laughs> and practitioners or even as consultants mm -hmm. uh, you have to ensure that you give the employer the necessary information that they need to be able to set up this information such that when, when it's time for an audit, all the information is in place. Well explained. Now coming to you, um, Mr. Khan, is it just the HR practitioners who are affected by the HR audits or even others like that? We talk about the finance employee supervisors as well as uh, management. Are they also affected when it comes to audits? So the HR audits really, they affect everyone um, and that's why sometimes when these audits are actually happening you find people, everybody's scampering all over the place, uh, definitely they will affect everyone. Let's start even just from the employee. Mm -hmm. From the employee side, um, when audits are being done, sometimes you find that some employee didn't maybe submit some documents, uh, maybe it was some certificate that they need to, to bring or maybe some sick notes or um, they didn't fill in some forms, let's say, the, at the time of engagement, because sometimes things happen quite fast at the time of recruitment and uh, when a department wants this person to report and start work, so you find that the employee could have maybe not submitted certain documents. Mm -hmm. So uh, when the audits are happening, you find that uh, the people in the company now will be even talking to the employees to make sure that the documents that might be missing on files are actually put there. So it will affect you as an employee. Uh, secondly, the supervisors. When you look at the supervisors, they, they are also responsible, for instance, in certain companies like in construction and mining, uh, making sure that the employees' time sheets are signed or the, the clocking records are actually there. Uh, so uh, if the, the supervisor was giving off days to some employee, those things have to be, for instance, on file. So even supervisors get to be affected by uh, these HR audits because sometimes they are found uh, uh, wanting where they did not maybe sign certain things which are supposed to be on file or which is supposed to be on the payroll file. Um, they, these HR audits will also affect even management. Mm -hmm. When we talk about bad management, we the management of, of a company, there's a certain way, like we talked about policies, are they, are they making sure that what they are doing, the way they are treating employees, the disciplinary issues, the grievance issues, uh, have they been doing the right things? Mm -hmm. So uh, at some point you might find that even when an audit is going on, a certain member of management may be called to confirm certain things. Mm -hmm. So these audits, they will affect everyone. Um, when we talk about the, the board even, uh, they are also not spared from, from these HR audits. Remember, for companies that have been set up, they have uh, 
they're supposed to have, uh, of course, you have the shareholders, you have the board, then you have management. So the board is responsible for approving policies, ensuring that the policies are there, management has prepared what is required. So uh, the board also needs to make sure that the, the necessary policies have been approved, which the company has to be using. So uh, it, would, it may also affect uh, them to that extent. Uh, the biggest uh, really group that is affected is HR practitioners themselves, and that's why we encourage colleagues who are in the HR fraternity to make sure that they are making sure things that are supposed to be there are actually there. The structures, the systems, the policies, the procedures are actually in place because when these HR audits are uh, taking place, they are the ones who start running around making sure that these things are there. So even before even HR audits are actually done in the company, it is advisable that uh, practitioners start to put things in place. And I know you talked about the request for uh, for setting up an HR department. Basically, like we are saying now, when you are going to be setting up a department, you need to make sure that all those things are in place, the policies are there, the contracts are there, the structures are there, because when, when the audits come, HR will be uh, very much affected. Um, we cannot also forget about colleagues in, in finance, because they are, in many cases they are running the payroll. So even them will be affected when these HR audits are, are, are being done because they have to make sure that they, they have the correct details on the, on the, on the files, uh, on the system itself, the payroll system. They have also uh, correct details about when people came in and people went out. We find that in some, some cases when we're doing these HR audits, you find that an employee left a month or two months ago and they're still receiving a salary. So that cannot be the case. So. Really, when we look at uh, who is affected by these HR audits, it's, it's almost everyone in the, com in the company. And that's why when they're being undertaken, everybody has to make sure that they, they play the, their part so that then at the end of the day, you have uh, proper audits done. Amazing. To our viewers, we are not picking any calls for now, please. So all you have to do is <laughs> just uh, drop us a text message using the number to write on your TV screen. Please don't call, just drop us a text message or rather go on our Facebook page which is KBN TV and just get to comment right there. If you keep on calling, unfortunately, we are not <laughs> picking any calls for now. Now coming to you, Ms. Kalwa, when are the HR audits are done? Okay, so the HR audits are done depending on the needs of the organization. So sometimes internally, they can be done maybe every three months, six months, yearly, biannually, depending on your needs. So when we look at um, what you need as an organization, you need to be very, um, you know, you need to plan for it. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes these HR audits are done, for example, when the minimum wage has been raised for legal and compliance issues. You have to look at, okay, how many employees do we have that um, are getting below the minimum wage? Mm -hmm. And so it helps you to plan as an HR to say, okay, by this time, these employees need to have, um, their salary needs to have changed. Mm -hmm. So this can only be done when you, when you conduct an HR audit. Um, sometimes it can also be when there's an acquisition or a major happening. Yeah. So if another company wants to come in and you know, merge with yours, mm -hmm. you need to have this audit done so that everything that they can need, any information, for example, maybe the number of employees you have, mm -hmm. how many, you know, how many dependents do they all have? Are they on health insurance? All these questions are some of the things that an HR practitioner needs to have mm -hmm. at the tip of their fingers. Yeah. And you can only do this when you do an HR audit, you refresh your knowledge. Because of course we're human, we do forget. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, it's very important for each HR person to be able to set a timeline and say, okay, I'll be doing this, these audits maybe every three months or every six months or yearly, depending on how many employees you have and all these other um, factors. Mm -hmm. And also it could, um, it could be for strategic planning. As a human resource, you need to plan for your department and for the employees, and it needs to align with the business strategy. So for example, if they say we're going to have a merger or an acquisition, you need to plan, okay, if it's a merger, we're now getting maybe um, a mining company, for example. You need to plan for, okay, now we never used to do medicals. Now we have to start doing medicals. You need yeah. to put it in your budget. So you, you, you need to have this knowledge and it can only come by you doing these audits, by you understanding where you're going and where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. And 
like here said, for example, if you have issues with payroll, like for example, there's an audit that is happening in your files on a contract for an employee, it's showing that this person gets paid a 30,000. Yeah. And then payroll is showing that this person is getting paid 60. So now if an auditor comes and says, okay, why is this? Yeah. As an HR, you need to be able to answer such questions. Mm -hmm. Because if you, didn't, if you don't go through those files, you won't know. And then when, when it's time for question and answer, you're now looking like you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> so yeah. it's very important to align the contracts mm -hmm. to what is on payroll. And you can only do this when you know what's going on. And yeah. everything that you need to know should be in the files. Yeah. And so as an HR, you need to make sure that these, your files are up to date and they reflect what is going on. Otherwise, these are questions that when you're put on the, <laughs> on the stand, you'll be looking like, okay, who's stealing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And now it's now you're pointing at each other with finance and all these things when it could have been a simple issue of aligning. Maybe mm -hmm. somebody got a promotion. That's why they're getting 60. Mm -hmm. yeah. That needs to be on the file to show that this person started at 30, but now they're at 60, mm -hmm. so that everything aligns. Amazing. We have an issue with quite a number of organizations. They start panicking when they hear of uh, audits, audits going on. <laughs> That's the only time we hear, no, start panicking and trying to yeah. run around and do one or two things to make sure that things are everything in order. Right so, Mr. Kanta, coming to you, so are there any pre-HR audits uh, preparations which organizations need to put in place so that you can just avoid the issue of when you start hearing of, of audits, audits you, you want to start running around and panicking. Do we have any uh, pre-HR audits preparations? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, like you've said, it happens a lot of times. So when, when, when people see that uh, an auditor is coming mm -hmm. or a HR consultant is coming, that's when now everybody is running around. It, it should really not be the case. Uh, but it's a reality. That's, that's what happens uh, on the ground. So what is needed? When, um, when these audits have been announced, you've been told that there will be a, uh, an audit um, which will take place. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that, first of all, uh, the person who's coming to do the audit, what we normally do, we'll, we'll do a scoping. So we will set the, the scope for this audit and the, the extent of the audit and the timelines for this audit. So what is important, and this is really for the HR practitioners, is, is to understand the scope of this audit so that you don't go all over the place trying to prepare for so many things which you don't really need. Mm -hmm. Understand the scope of the audit. What this means is that uh, when the, the, the consultant who's coming to do the audit are coming, they'll tell you, for this audit, we are going to be looking, for instance, at the system, we're going to be looking at maybe the files, we're going to look at, and, and in the scope, they will also even tell you, even the, the period, they will tell you we are auditing from this period to that period. And if they have not told you, what we encourage uh, practitioners and companies really uh, is to ask. It's, it's not a crime to, 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 to talk with the people, the consultants or the ones who are doing the, the HR audit. Mm -hmm. Ask them, okay, so what is the audit actually uh, going to encompass? Mm -hmm. What is the period being, being covered? Because like for, for small companies or for new companies, it's a straightforward thing. Maybe your company has been in operation for maybe two years or one year or three years. It's a simple issue. There are those audits that are done, HR audits, which are done on old companies where you find this person has been in employment for 30 years. So the scope of the audit is extremely important. When you understand that, it helps you to really now put documents that cover that period. Mm -hmm. If they're going to go as far as 1964, then you have to start looking into the archives. Uh, and even the documents, are they even there? Are they within the company? Are they maybe uh, saved, you know, their documents that are stored away from the company mm -hmm. uh, in those uh, storage facilities? So understanding the scope of the audit is extremely important. It's number one. Number two, like we've said, apart from the scope, understand the documents. We've touched a bit on it. Understand the documents that will be needed. Um, normally, they, they will tell you, we are going to look at contracts, we're going to look at this, we'll review this. So understanding the documents that will be needed uh, in the audit is also very, very important. So when we go into these companies to look at um, how they've been performing, 
and the documents will be listed most of the times. So they'll tell you we need to uh, please submit uh, the, maybe the, the strategic plan, the organization structure, the HR policies, submit copies of contracts um, for, for management, non-management, middle management, and so on. So they will tell you, uh, give us conditions of service, give us your disciplinary code, give us uh, whatever it is, samples of different documents. So again, understanding the documents that will be needed is very important. We see, we see it a lot of times when we're doing this kind of works and you find that the person, the, the whole company is on fire because, no, no, because you know, we don't know. You, you are going to, to prepare for things that maybe they are not even looking for. Mm -hmm. So ask the kind of documents. Thirdly, it's important to also understand and prepare the team mm -hmm. that will be dealing with these audits. It's not everybody who has to, who has to be dealing with the audit. So what happens not mostly is if you are three four in the department, in the HR department, or just the whole company in management, when they are asking for the audits to say we're going to undertake these audits, whether internal auditors or external auditors or HR consultants or, or Minister of Labor or the Zambia Institute of Human Resource, put together a team. This team, it could be one person when we talk about team. <laughs> we cannot say it has to be 300 people. You put together a team. It could be three or four or five people. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it will be people from uh, your the HR department. could be another person from the 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 finance department, it could be another person maybe from legal. Mm -hmm. Depending on, on, on how you're sitting and how big your institution is, what is important is that this team has to start looking at the details of this audit. What is it that they're asking us to produce? Do we have these things? So if it is a matter, the documents that have to be with the, um, the HR department, let's say we're talking about contracts like uh, Ms. Karua was talking about the contracts and whatnot, HR has to make sure that those things are actually there. They, if there are things that maybe have to do with the payroll, mm -hmm. in a case where the payroll is sitting with finance and they're the ones with access rights and all those things, because it's not everybody who will log into that uh, payroll system. So that's why you need that person from finance to be part of the team in case the, the, the actual H, uh, HR audit will involve finance. Mm -hmm. There has to be collaboration. We, we see sometimes in companies where I, HR is this side, the finances, and they don't even speak. What is that about? You are supposed to work as a team. You are one team serving the same company. Discuss. It's not a hey, now the auditors have come. Who's we'll see no, you? No, no. Hey, hey, that <laughs> one. <laughs> no, it's not necessary. They have to work as a team. Mm -hmm. We also talked about the, if you have a legal department or you have external lawyers, mm -hmm. whichever is the case. Also bring them on board because sometimes what is being looked for uh, are documents that come from the board. Uh, the resolutions, mm -hmm. where resolutions was passed that this policy exists. And in case you have not gotten those things and put them uh, in the HR department, you need this person who can then be, as, as, I'm talking about legal in this case, if they are the ones providing company secretarial services. Mm -hmm. In certain case, um, chartered accountants. Uh, provide those company secretary services so they have access maybe to the minutes uh, they they can remember what was passed by the board and so on well, things that maybe have been approved if you didn't have them as documents on the HR side so again work with them they I, we keep on emphasizing we don't have to have these silos where HR is this side finance is this side legal is this side all those things are absolutely unnecessary mm -hmm. what we're saying is they should work as a team and say how do we prepare ourselves properly so that you can then give the documents because like uh miss carwa was saying if you cannot produce something then what's going on in this company we should either be thinking maybe you are incompetent you don't know what you're doing and if you don't know what you're doing why are you getting paid maybe you should be fired <laughs> apart from that maybe you are, cons you are you are benefiting from the confusion that is that is happening uh, why don't we have these things in place so that's why we're saying it's not necessary for uh, team members to work separately. They have to work as a team because they are serving the same company and trying to achieve the same thing. Uh, so apart from having the team in place, it is also uh, a bit of preparation mm -hmm. in terms of for the, the oral kind of questions and answers. You also have to prepare. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you going to say what you have to say? Because we see in some companies, 
the person who is within the company is the one who even starts to say all sorts of things. No, yeah, in fact, here, mm -mm. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is an audit, man. <laughs> Give the information that they're asking for. Uh, if you have, uh, like the way some people now want to be, to use it as a whistleblower. No, here we have, in fact, we stuff I wrote. In fact, nah, let's be, be factual. What is it that we're going to be looking at? Mm -hmm. Again, we're not saying people should be stopped from telling the, the auditor the things that they go through, but it's how you package the thing. Is it actually true? Mm -hmm. Or are trying to now bring someone out to, to use this channel as a way to cry about things that internally should be resolved. So they, they, that discussion becomes important. So they are telling them things that are factual. Okay. So over and above, those are really the key things that you start preparing for and uh, knowing when these things will be done and when it is expected to, to finish. You do your pre-audit uh, preparations. There should be no problem. Well explained. Now coming to you, Ms. Kadwa. Mr. Kanda did mention saying that it doesn't hurt to ask the auditors, uh, they just get information from them on what mm -hmm. grounds do they want to audit the, the organization and whatnot. So coming to you, how do you work with the, the HR auditors? He said it doesn't hurt to ask. So <laughs> I, I want to know how you work with the, with the auditors. How uh, comfortable is it? Or yeah. you also start running around <laughs> and... <laughs> Even take leave. Yeah? <laughs> Running away from Okay, so when it comes to the audit, mm -hmm. if maybe it's auditors, external auditors, consultants, mm -hmm. or whoever uh, that will be doing the, the audit, it's very important that as an HR practitioner, you need to be able to provide them with the information that they need. Mm -hmm. So, for example, like you said, um, you know, if they ask you for maybe the contracts and you're like, no, there's no contract. It's, <laughs> it's now a question of, wow. okay, are you benefiting <laughs> from this confusion? Why not? Mm -hmm. Because as a nature practitioner, you know the best practices. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know that every employee that you employ, you need to have a written document that states, you know, who they are you know, how much they're supposed to be getting, and all these other details. So now, if that's not in place, it's now a question of how do you know if you're paying this person the right uh, money, yeah. you know, or maybe you agreed the 3,000 and you're paying them a 2,5, and they don't know the difference because maybe they're not as learned. Mm -hmm. So um, these are some of the things that you need to be very vigilant about. When they come in, they ask for something, and it's to be truthful. When you don't yeah. have it, you don't have it. You're not going to produce, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, an approved contract from labor in, within 24 hours. Yeah. So these are some of the things that, like he had mentioned, we need to be able to plan for them in advance. Mm -hmm. When you know that there's maybe an, an audit coming with an external auditor, you need to be able to start putting things in place. You mm -hmm. yourself, as an HR practitioner, you conduct an internal audit and you say, okay, I don't have contracts, I don't have offer letters, I don't have this, I don't have that. And then you work with management and see how you can be able to, to get that information and have it in place. But if you can't, there are some things that don't happen by magic. <laughs> if you don't have it, you don't have it. When they ask, it's better to be truthful and let them know that this is not in place. Um, the other thing is to also just be available if they need a personnel, if they need someone from finance mm -hmm. to ask them certain questions. You as a child don't have to hover around that finance person mm -hmm. and be like, you know, <laughs> don't tell them. what did you tell them? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you start asking, what did you tell them? What is this? What is that? The, this is why he said you, need, you don't work in isolation. Mm -hmm. You work as a team. When you're a team, you discuss and say, okay, Vane, this is what's happening. I don't have contracts. We're paying these people this, this amount. When they ask you, I'm going to be honest from my side. So even you, you'll be able to say, okay, no, this is best practice. We're moving with maybe the minimum wage and then going from there, this is how we came up with the salaries. You know, it's easier to, to give auditors the information that they need when you work as a team, mm -hmm. internally first. Um, also, uh, you can be able to ask them, you know, uh, if they ask for something and then maybe you don't have it or, or maybe there's an issue with it or maybe it's still been, at, it's at labor you submitted, it's yeah. not yet done, it's not yet back. You need to clarify certain things. Like the example that I gave, somebody, you know, on the contract is showing 30, 
periods showing 60 how? When they ask such questions, you need to be able to explain and say, okay, no, what happened is that we promoted this individual, mm -hmm. but we did not um, draft a promotion letter to show that his salary has moved, it was verbal. Mm -hmm. That way the auditors know, okay, so this is what happened, and they'll be able to dot it down. And this is where recommendations come in, yeah. you know. After the audit is done, you as an HR practitioner can ask them, for recommendations. Mm -hmm. You can ask them, okay, you've carried out this audit, I know there were some blanks, even maybe some, some things that we didn't even notice, you know. Sometimes as HR practitioners, you come into an organization, you try to put things straight, and maybe sometimes you don't know everything, you know. You can think you've, you've done everything and all the loopholes are closed, but when an external auditor comes in and then they're able to see things that you're not able to see. Mm -hmm. okay. So this is why it's very important to ask for recommendations. You ask them, okay, this audit has been done, what is your recommendation? Mm -hmm. And it will be able to open your eyes to some of the things that you missed out, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't hurt to you know, ask and to be given this feedback so that you can work better. And you can be able to put things in place to ensure mm -hmm. that you're 100% compliant with the national labor laws and everything else that is needed for you as an organization. Well explained. Now, Mr. Kanda, I know maybe uh, our HR practitioners must be asking themselves certain questions. So <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd like to find out as well, when you go to carry out uh, these HR audits in various companies, what really do you look for? I, I, I know my HR practitioners out there they they want should, to know. They should be going for workshops, they want to just be talking, talking. They're waiting for you to respond <laughs> to them. <laughs> I know they're waiting for Mr. Kavant just to inform them what really you look for when you go for HR audits. Yeah, so uh, when we're going for these HR audits, there are a lot of things that we look for. And it's, it's, um, this is why we talked about the scope that the HR person who is in that company needs to really understand what mm -hmm. is being looked out for. Uh, let's start from where things start from. If you're a big company and you have a board in place, mm -hmm. uh, the first place we want to also check is just do you have a strategic plan in place? Uh, if you have a strategic plan in place, we will start to look at various other things mm -hmm. uh, for companies that are, which don't have a strategic plan. And again, we, we emphasize strategic plans are not things that are sitting one page on the, on the computer. So we, we see this a lot of times uh, in our practice. It's a, a document approved by the board. Mm -hmm. And it's different from the NHRA strategy. Again, we have to emphasize these are two, two different things. So we look at that. If you have a strategic plan in place, uh, we'll check, okay, if this is in place. We'll look at uh, the, the governance structures. Mm -hmm. On the governance structures, we're saying, okay, if you have a board in place, is it there? If, if, if it is not, we start understanding. The issue is that when you have a board, we see do you have some committees that look at maybe finance and administration and things like that? Because they become important in, in, in approving the policies that will affect employees. And so if you have that uh, in place, you have your management in place. So we are saying the board, uh, we at least will get some comfort that they are approving the policies that are being presented to them. So we, we, are, we are going to see uh, what actually they approved in addition to issues that affect the, the employees. Uh, apart from the, that, we then start going to the detail now. Mm -hmm. We'll look at the structure. Uh, first of all, is the structure, organization structure even there? Well, we see that in a lot of companies. Uh, it's just, oh, uh, uh, when you're a manager, this one, I think, in supervisor, uh, where is this thing written? So we start looking at the actual organization structure. If you have a structure, is it actually approved? Okay. Again, I keep on emphasizing, it's not something that is draft in the laptop and you say, no, this is our structure. Is it approved by the board? That's why we were looking at those governance uh, things. So in this structure, if we find that it was actually approved, mm -hmm. that structure, the organization structure will have different, you know, those things that you just see as boxes. For us, they mean a lot of, uh, a lot of things. How many, what are the titles in those, in those boxes? What, how many people are supposed to be in each one of those boxes? Actually, when you look at organization structures that have been prepared by consultants who know what they're doing, they'll even tell you the director by one, uh, analyst by three, uh, finance expert by this, my mineral expert by this. They have those numbers because 
those are the things that the board would have said this is a number that we need in this company. Mm -hmm. So if those things are there on the structure, we then start to see, we will marry it with what you have recruited. Remember we talked about documents. If now we say here, you said you're going to have five sales and marketing officers. We check the payroll, we find you have seven. Where did this come from? Now problems start. This is the way we like to see people speaking a lot of English. No, in <laughs> fact, moreover, actually, <laughs> no, it's not necessary. Give us the approvals. When did this change? So the whole issue is you need to be very clear. When those structures, and this we emphasize to our colleagues in HR, mm -hmm. uh, that structure which is approved, it's not just a document. Mm -hmm. We have to pay attention to what is sitting on the structure, the titles, the levels, the grades, the, even the numbers. Because when the, uh, the audits are, are actually taking place, it is one document that they'll be looking at to see, do we have the right people, the right numbers mm -hmm. sitting here? Or you're actually recruiting people outside of that uh, approved structure. And if you are approving, uh, you are recruiting people outside the approved organization structure, we are then saying, who told you to, uh, to recruit? Who approved this recruitment, which is outside of the approved organization structure? So again, these are things, because sometimes there's pressure. And you know, in some companies, like in private companies, you find the boss will just come, no, I need extra two people. So as HR, what we advise is you have to see what is on the structure. Mm -hmm. Probably that's for the full-time employees or the fixed-term staff, those with long-term contracts or permanent contracts. And then there are those that you can employ on short term. Uh, maybe they're just there for three months or four months. Probably they don't need to be on the structure. So again, you have to make sure that these things are separated. Mm -hmm. and that's why we say don't mix uh, the contracts, that's why you have to know what you're doing. If you are of a challenge, you make sure you can, uh, there are people that you can actually uh, get to to help you. Okay. So looking at that structure, those are things we look at, including how, uh, who is reporting to who, uh, how clear are these, uh, these, these structures, the reporting lines and so on. So there is a lot that goes on just on the structure itself. When we look, apart from the structure, the other thing we look at is the recruitment. When we look at the recruitment, like I said, we say, we check these recruitments that have been done, are they in line with the, track, the approved structure? Then the people that you actually recruited, how are they recruited? Were you just appointing people because it's Karuba, we know each other, so you're now the next uh, HR? Or there was a process that was followed. Remember, there are policies. So we start with checking the recruitment policy. Mm -hmm. and remember, we talked about governance structure and the board. If the board approved a certain recruitment policy, we'll check, are you actually following that policy in your recruitment? So apart from what the law says, it's also to what extent you are adhering to your own recruitment processes. So when we look at that, we check if you are, if you are recruiting people according to the process. If you said you're going to advertise, have you been advertising? If you said you're going to promote people from within the company, are you actually doing that? So we look at the, the recruitments, the contracts that Ms. Karuba was talking about. Mm -hmm. We check, did you actually give people contracts? And if you gave people the contracts, what type of contracts? Are they short term, are they long term, are they permanent? Mm -hmm. What are the conditions in these contracts that are giving the people at the time of recruitment? So there's a lot of detail, I'm actually summarizing these things. It's a whole big uh, process on just looking at the recruitments that have been done. Uh, where there are forms which show that this person, the supervisor requested for this person and you recruited them uh, and this, I mean, the, the, the request itself was approved. Oh my God, if you, you know, you are sitting, you had some coffee and you say, no, I need extra people. Mm -hmm. So if your policy says the forms have to be approved by the general manager of the company or the CEO of the company, did we actually get those approvals? So you will start looking at all those details. If there are supposed to be the committees that uh, the, the interviewing committee, where are these, these things there? So this is why you find that uh, the, when the audits are done, you find you are all, it, the company has actually been going again. It's on uh, laid down processes. So it's important as the HR, I know, and uh, I'm talking to the colleagues in HR, there is a lot of pressure. This we receive a lot of pressure all the time. Uh, you are saying no, but we need to do interviews. The manager will tell you no, it, it, production will shut down. So I need these people now, now, now. But again, you'll find that you have gone against your own internal processes mm -hmm. or procedures. So 
This is where we emphasize that educate the, the management mm -hmm. on some of the internal processes that you have set for yourselves. If they're not working for you, go back to the board, change them so that you have processes and uh, procedures that actually work for you. But as long as they have not been changed and they have been approved, that is what you are supposed to follow. So apart from recruitment, when the people come in, we start now looking, we're now auditing now your salary and conditions of service. First of all, we have a policy approved around this. Do we have approved salary structure? Mm -hmm. Or uh, Ms. Karuba maybe was just dreaming up uh, salaries. Yes. <laughs> and this one, I like this one. I think 5p, no, I don't know, 50p in this one. No, you have to look at what salary structure actually exists. Is it approved again? So these things, we talk about these things and really it's an appeal to our colleagues, especially the young people in HR that have been asking these kind of questions. Ensure that you take to, to the board this, this kind of documents, they approve for you mm -hmm. because it starts to help to protect you. Because this is where we're saying, are you benefiting from the confusion that is happening? Um, people start to look at you like, you know, maybe that, yeah, that's why now he has a flat, now he has a car, or she has this, or because the, there is confusion happening. No, it's not necessary. So salary structures, we will check if they have been approved. The consultant or the, whoever is doing the audits will check uh, from the contracts that have been given, are they matching with the salary that, that have been approved. Also, apart from that, they will go to the payroll system. Like we said, on the payroll, what have you put there? Have you actually uh, reflected the salaries that are, that are supposed to be paid? So everything around the salary, are you paying the correct salaries like Ms. Karuba was talking about? Mm -hmm. If they are not there, what is the approval that was followed? So apart from the salaries, the, the salaries and conditions, you also be audited on the uh, performance management system. Do you have the, the system in place itself? Is there a, a, an approved policy around it? Mm -hmm. uh, do you have the appraisal system that you use? And how, if you have it in place, how, to what extent is it actually fair? Mm -hmm. This appraisal process, are the managers or supervisors trained? Uh, do the employees know? Or it's just somebody will be sitting, drinking their coffee at home, then they say, no, this one I don't like, I'll give them uh, 55. Uh, that one smiled like, last year, yesterday, <laughs> so I give them 70. So is there a process around performance management? Mm -hmm. We will also like audit uh, around, um, we'll look at the aspect around uh, training and development. If you have, a, do you have actually a policy around training and development? If you have a policy in place, is it being followed? How fair are you being uh, in terms of how you give to everybody? Or is it just a group of people who are going for studies, being sponsored by the company uh, all the time, while others don't benefit from that? So again, the people that will be doing the HR audits, they will still check for those kind of things. Mm -hmm. The disciplinary and the grievance procedures is another area that the people who undertake HR audits will also look into. The, do you have a disciplinary code in place? Remember, uh, Section 95 of the Employment Code has given policies that you are supposed to have. So those things are there in place. When you come to when we're talking about disciplinary matters, to what extent have you been following your own internal processes? Because if your process says you have to charge someone, you have to give them a chance to behave and you never followed, then you are going against your own policies. Uh, all the way to the separation with the staff. How much was, uh, how did you separate? How much was paid to these employees? So there is really a lot of work that goes on when the audits are actually being undertaken and it's important that um, as a, an HR who is going to be uh, audited, you make sure that everything is in place. For documents that are not there, you make sure that they are there. Uh, if, if you cannot produce them like Ms. Karua was talking about, make it clear to the people who are auditing that, okay, we are working around these things to make sure that things are in place. Yeah. On behalf of the HR practitioners, thank you very much for giving us a mini lecture. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. <laughs> To all uh, the HR practitioners watching right now, managers, talk of our business owners, please get in touch with the team for step-by-step -step assistance on 0979-511-770. The number again is 0979-511-770. So if you, you or someone you know needs assistance uh, to do with the HR matters and HR audits, 
these are the, this is the number which you can use to get in touch with the team. I, I don't want anyone to start asking me again, which number should I use to get in touch with the team and what not. I have really given you the number. The number again is 0979-511-770. 0979-511-770. Please get in touch with the team. If you have any questions and, and anything to do with the labor matters or HR audits and whatnot, please, that is the number you can use. Coming to you, uh, Ms. Calva, after the HR audits are done, what should the company do? What is next after the HR audits? Should we also start relaxing again? Because, I mean, it's mm. done. Yeah. It, it's, 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 it's now a free world. What is supposed to be done after the HR audits? Okay. So I know that a lot of people, you know, after that pressure is done, you mm -hmm. want to run away, you're like, okay, yes, everything is done. Mm -hmm. But the HR audits, when the recommendations are given, mm -hmm. this is why now the work starts for an HR practitioner and management or an employer. Mm -hmm. This is why now your work starts. Yeah. You need to look at what did they recommend when mm -hmm. it comes to uh, recruitment and selection, like Mr. Kavanda said. What do you have a policy? If there's no policy, you need to start drafting one. Mm -hmm. Or if there's a policy, are you adhering to it? If you're not, take it to the board, let it be revised. Mm -hmm. So this is where you have to be proactive and not reactive because the same thing will find you next year. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day now, it will be like, okay, you're not getting all the recommendations we're giving you. If yeah. you're a HR practitioner, they will ask you why these things have not been done. And you might be at the verge of losing your job because it's okay, you are given recommendations, you don't work on them. Mm -hmm. So you have to be really proactive you look at training and development. You look at, okay, are uh, the employees getting the, you know, the trainings that they need? These audits will show you that, okay, the people that you have, the skills that they have, it's not turning with the work that they're supposed to be doing. And so there's that gap. So you need to plan for it to say, okay, maybe the, the employees that we have are grade 12s and most of them need to go for skills, um, maybe to a skill center for them to get information, or they need to go to school. Mm -hmm. So you need to plan and put it in place and say, okay, how many people in each department will we be taking to school yearly for them to gain the knowledge and the skills that they need, for them to be able to do their job effectively? Because at the end of the day, if you have employees who can't do their job effectively, you are going to close down because you will lose more when it comes to machineries will be breaking down, things will be getting lost, you customers will be turning away because you don't have a trained force mm -hmm. so you also have to look at employee retention and relations mm -hmm. how do we you know relate with our employees for example like he mentioned some will come to the auditors and say here ish, <laughs> we work we work day in day out night and day it doesn't matter what time we don't know what eight hours feels like mm -hmm. yeah. we don't even get overtime for it so these are some of the things that they will mention in their recommendations mm -hmm. to say you are not treating the employees right mm -hmm. and you are going against the law. And this is what you need to put in place. Mm -hmm. If it has to be maybe uh, shifts, this is what you're going to put in place. If, you know, employees must work, you know, eight hours. If it goes above this, you need to pay them overtime. You need to have overtime sheets in place. You need to train your supervisors what to do. So these are some of the things that you, you would be given as recommendations. And as an employer and employee and you know, HR practitioner, you need to be able to take these things and not see it also as if you are being targeted. Because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people, after an audit and it comes out, and you're like, ah, that auditor is even smiling at me, yeah. but this is what he's written, you know? Yeah. And but it's it's not meant to target you. It's mm -hmm. meant to help you improve mm -hmm. um, how the organization is working and what needs to be done for you to perform at optimal and also to be compliant. Because if there are some things that uh, maybe go against the law, if it's if it's a heavy thing, they are mandated to report. Mm -hmm. And this is why now you find yourself answering questions maybe before Minister of Labor and you know, you, 
if you say I didn't know, those are <laughs> those are some That's things right. that just <laughs> end up like as an HR, you didn't yeah. know that yeah. somebody you know is being overworked or, or something like that. Yeah. So these are things that will help you not to reach that stage, mm -hmm. and so that you can be able to ratify these mistakes in due time. Yeah. Thank you very much for that explanation. Um, I, I don't know why time always. <laughs> <laughs> It does its magic. <laughs> but Mr. Kanda, from, from what you've explained in uh, Ms. Kalba's explanation, we can clearly say, is it that we can clearly say that HR audits and um, they're just actually not something to be scared of? Yeah. But why do we still run? Yeah. Why do we always panic if there are things that <laughs> we, <laughs> we're not supposed yeah. to be scared of, Mr. Kanda? Yeah, no, definitely. The HR audits are not things to be afraid of. Uh, mm -hmm. What is really key is when these HR audits are happening, actually, mm -hmm. like we say, be friends with the people that are carrying out the audits. Mm -hmm. Understand what exactly you're missing and things that you need to put in place. Uh, in that way, you start now improving everything that you're doing. Really, the focus should be on improvement. Mm -hmm. Unless, really, audits are being carried out uh, to fix someone. Normally, they are not meant for, <laughs> for fixing anybody. They are meant to help the company to actually become compliant with the applicable labor laws and regulations mm -hmm. like NAPSA, NIMA, uh, and all these things that uh, are actually required. So uh, just start to put in place the things that I've asked you to, to improve on. That's all. Amazing. We can read some of the text messages which we've received from our dear viewers. And I don't know why you people still call, but <laughs> please, if you want to get in touch with us, just drop us a text message using the number which is right on your TV screen, or better go on our Facebook page, which is KBN TV, and just drop your comment right there. We'll get to respond to all the text messages and comments from our page. So our first text message reads, there are some big companies which have no HR, and um, the thing that happens if you call the labor, the labor will come and two days after you are gone, meaning issue with the labor. Please give us the number of uh, Pinga Kaluba. Mm -hmm. oh, they want your contact number. Someone wants your contact <laughs> number. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the second text reads, Hi, everyone. I am following the program. I need your help. Is NAPSA mandatory to the workers or it's the boss to choose who to give? At our company, only those in construction, they are given NAPSA, but the maids are not given. Please help. If you can respond okay. to this. NAPSA is mandatory for employees. Just that, it's mandatory. <laughs> All right, this one. Good afternoon, KBN TV and Stefano. Um, what role do human resource officer in the awarding of contracts? I asked... I ask so because in most cases, this office really seem absent. I was working for uh, a named company and I was given a supervisory role, managing a department at a regional level. Now in our contracts, we were told that we were entitled to overtime, but they were not given to us. When I ask the boss, he says, those things don't exist. They only exist on paper. Now the question is, is there any condition of service in a contract that just exists on paper? We were working without proper PPEs, so when, the, when these labor officers are going around inspecting these, uh, please, even state-owned companies are abusing its own people, not just the Chinese companies. We keep hearing about day in and day out. Okay. Yeah, so really, for our colleague there, Everybody who's um, working, mm -hmm. if you have gone past six months, uh, it's a requirement that the contract is put in, in writing. Mm -hmm. And that has, the contract will stipulate the terms and conditions. Uh, if the person is going to be uh, titled to like overtime, mm -hmm. then definitely the company has to pay. And mm -hmm. if it's not paying, the employer has the right to uh, visit uh, the nearest labor office and they put across. Uh, their situation. Not then just on paper. Help. Not just on paper, no. <laughs> if it's on paper, it has to also be in practice. If it's on practice, it has to be on paper. It, is, it, it goes away both ways. All right, this one reads, how do you classify the people in hotel industry? We have seen a company here in Livingston which has been changing HR because of not being in line with labor law. How do you help or protect um, those HR? 
Yeah, so for HR that uh, have challenges, uh, they belong to the Zambia Institute. The, the Institute is there to, to, to speak on their behalf when they, they have challenges, but also there's a Ministry of Labor if an HR believes that they are being victimized when they try to do the right thing. It's, it's, a, it's a quite a challenge, but that's why those institutions operate. If they are members of the Zambia Institute of Human Resources, they should be able to be guided on how they should get around challenges that they're having. All right, because of time, if you can read uh, this last text message. Is it normal for a boss to hold your original certificate for more than two months? <laughs> and is it normal for a worker to work four years without proper working condition? We need labor officers to visit our working places to check. We are asking for the contacts um, from Mr. Dizulu. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, national registration cards and qualifications for education and so mm -hmm. on, all those originals, they are personal things and they are private. You, you submit to the company, the company does the photocopying. Um, if they are being kept, probably that means that the employer doesn't want you to go and work somewhere else. Uh, you have the right again to bring those to the attention of the Minister of Labor nearest to where you are. Uh, also, just go online, you should be able to find the contacts for Minister of Labor, then you can uh, actually report such cases. Otherwise, those are personal documents that should not be, because that could be considered like uh, it's now slavery, mm -hmm. where you don't want the person to have the freedom to, to live when they want to live. So it should not be the case. This has been an amazing conversation, and I believe our viewers have really enjoyed this conversation. Ms. Kaluba, your last remarks as we get to wrap up this conversation. Okay. Um, from, from my side, what I can say is that, like Mr. Kavant has spoken, mm -hmm. HR audits are not something to be scared of. Be prepared. If you don't have something, you don't have it. Be upfront. You know, work with your colleagues and just ensure that everything that needs to be done is done. Mm -hmm. and have a cabinet for your HR files yeah. where only you or your, <clears throat> your director, your CEO have access to it and have everything that is needed so that once an audit comes in, you're just giving them what they need. It makes your work easy, it mm -hmm. makes life easy, and you run around less. <laughs> Amazing, Mr. Khan. Yeah, really, like we've said, um, HR audits are, uh, like we've been saying, it's not a crime, it's not something to be scared of. Really, what is key, uh, like uh, what uh, Ms. Karwa said, mm -hmm. just put everything in place. And again, uh, when you're starting a company or it's an odd company, just sit down and see what needs to be put in place, the policies, the procedures, the structures. And if you don't know how to go about it, then get help. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. This has been an amazing conversation and looking forward to having such kind of a conversation next week. Thank you. To our viewers, thank you very much for watching Labor Matters right here on KBN TV, the finest television. Today we're looking at an interesting topic and thank you very much for the feedback. But let us continue this conversation right on our Facebook page, which is KBN TV. Just give us your comments and contributions about our topic of discussion for today. Just a reminder, if you have any questions as an HR practitioner, managers or business owners, you can get in touch with the TMA on Azure 9. 7951 I have been your host as usual, Patricia Chilamikwa. From me and the entire production crew, it's goodbye. See you next week, same time, same channel.